Hi there, welcome to a uh, new video. Um, we've got the overhead camera in full effect at the, the cutting mattings down and we've got on the map, we've got sleeper. Um, this is um, a Christmas present um, my brother got me. He was a great pains to point out they didn't spend a lot of money on it. Oh, he spent 250 on this. Have a look, see what you think. You might, I think you might find it fun or a bit of a giggle. Um, so first up, let's talk about the, the the people in the book. Okay. So this is written. It had, this book has two writers and one artist. Um, this is written by Jed Mercurio, Parasana pra, Prawanaja, Prawanaja, yeah, Prawanaja. I'm going with that. And Jorge Navarro. Um, now this is all their first. This is a first graphic novel from all these guys. Um, but here's here's the thing. Jed Mercurio is a TV writer who's written a uh, Line of Duty, Bodies, and a bunch of other things. Um, he's like a big shot sort of TV writer. Um, Rana is was also a writer. Uh, I've only found a few pieces he's done. He's mainly an actor these days. And okay, I've only ever seen this work there is some kind of hint that there's a hint of a paperback book sci-fi paperback book but it's out of print and it's, it's seemingly non-existent um, now this book was first published back in 2021 so this book is three years old all right um so we can talk about it it's basically a story well, it's about this space cow, uh, space cowboy, space cop, a space marshal called DS5, who's been dispatched to the solar system from the outer territories to be sort of decommissioned. And it travels with gate pod, and it gets taken aboard this space station on Titan, and we get this waking sequence, which is almost like something like aliens. Uh, which is brilliant. Um, this is I like this bit of lighting uh, Jorge has done here. Uh, using the white of the page as a light, and um, we're using it as here around the face as light it like that. Love that. And then get used to see uh, DS5 holding the collar of his spacesuit every every frame. Dum, dum, dum. Holds it a lot. Um, and initially, I thought it was kind of a stupid thing to do, but actually, it's very reminiscent of sol uh, soldiers or policemen wearing flak jackets, you know, like stab vests. They'll often hold the neck of it. So I I'm going to give Hoke some props on that one. That's a really clever use of, of sort of something a temporary superimposed onto something futuristic. Um, seems like DS5 has got um, psychic abilities, so he touches some something and gets all the information um he also appears to be cyborg and have some biological added as well um it, this whole sequence is very confusing because like within seconds this whole space station explodes this crew member rescues this crew member again to an escape pod uh and then the hatch fails and this person gets sucked out into space and he's looking through the open hatch right and the open hatch is on the capsule the capsule goes through the atmosphere of the planet and deploys its parachutes so it's re it's doing re-entry you actually see re-entry and this guy is sat in there without a spacesuit or a helmet on and he's fine absolutely fine um, in which case, why wear the space? Um, he then decides he's on the case, and this space station blowing up is murder. Or you know, it could have been an old space station and be metal fatigue. <clears throat> but apparently, apparently it's murder, and straight away we've got some intrigue on Earth, and then we we literally cut straight back to. Um, Titan cops have turned up and, and oh, this is a lovely bit of dialogue I need to read this bit of dialogue the cops have turned up 
um, he's ejected from a, an exploding space station. They're out there, weapons drawn. Okay, hold your position. Uh, hold your position. Do not move, or you will be fired upon. Bryce, Bryce, sheriff of of Bryce, sheriff of Titan. I don't. That doesn't make sense. Hold. Are you fired upon, Bryce? Sheriff of Titan, identify. Oh, he's Bryce, Sheriff of Titan. Did he be a common not a full stop? Uh, he's in designation D5. <laughs> like some of the stupidest dialogue I've ever heard. Sir, I need you to step into the vehicle. You'll freeze. You're frozen. Pick one. You'll freeze or he's frozen. What the is this? Where's his Where's his EVA suit? And that's a very good question. I mean, none of these guys seem to be large in the fact that you guys need this stuff and he doesn't and then this person turns up who's just a civilian uh they've got an orange line on the spacesuit that becomes important um and then they were just instantly escorted away they say something how are you still alive there's only one sort of person can, can breathe in an exo atmosphere um he's claiming jurisdiction uh, 83 people missing, presumed dead, and she's actually all because her dad's gone missing. Find this out later. We have an interview scene that goes nowhere. He essentially <laughs> pushes the glass and it breaks and demands to be taken to the evidence locker, evidence depot, where he looks at one piece of evidence of the spate of the crashed. Uh, space station and concludes that it didn't explode. Crushed. This, I forget people, this is what a crushed space station looks like. Um, it then commandeers a weapon and a vehicle and goes off on the investigation. Now, at this point, the cops should be, I can't tell if the cops are trying to stop him or not, because they don't seem to be. Uh, he goes to the last missing person's office, investigates, finds a location and disappears. And then the Keystone cops turn up, trying to um, stop him? For some reason, although he's already claimed uh, jurisdiction, obtained, commandeered a weapon and a gun, and these uh, a weapon and a vehicle, and these guys, eleven of them, none of them decide to do anything to stop this guy. Uh, we've got a sequence where we meet the Doctor El Bush. Um, it's quite nice. I quite like the way he paints. Um, quite like the way that Jorge, uh, okay, okay, um. Puts the lighting on the visors of the good shape, but it's a problem because they're facing each other, and she's lit from one side, so his lighting should be from the other side, like this and that. So her left, his right. But it's her left, his left, his uh, left, then, uh, and then his left, her left, her left, his right. Uh, yeah. Um. So it sort of makes it very confusing in terms of like a 180 degree rule type of thing. Um, so they start investigating. There's a bit of a rock slide. He needs to take his, he takes his helmet off again. And they go back to her place. He res she rescues him. They go back to her place. They stay overnight or so. Or she gives him more information about the missing person. Face suit. Definitely a thing. Then they go out investigating some more. They're seemingly underwater, but it's really difficult to tell because, um, yeah, they're seemingly underwater here. No, to retrieve a map, they go somewhere else. Um, there's a, another rock slide. Um, get X. A Lancet article, then we cut somewhere else, and I'm not even sure where this is. So, um, coppers, the coppers turn up, and our guy is abseiling down the um, this big drill site. So they use a little light lightsaber knife and they cut it so he falls. And then the bottom of the pit is the missing. Uh, the, Girl's missing father. Um, to be continued, it says. Um, 
guess what? Not continue. There is no issue two. There is no book two. Um, so what we get is 88 pages of just set, some setup with some confusing dialogue, weird bubble placements, and um, Hoke's art style, which I kind of like. It sort of reminds me a little bit of Darwin Cook in that it's, it's kind of loose, but it's also really straight, slightly scratchy lines, which isn't the same. And I think it's partly the coloring that really lifts it as well. Um, there's some great. I, I love the sequence on the on the space station as it's exploding. Sort of uh, this sequence, the reds are really great. Uh, this this graduation of sort of what's it gonna be? White through red, orange and into red, um, oh, white yellow into orange and into reds. Looks great. It works really well. I think this is brilliant. You got the blues of the space station against the reds of the planet. Awesome. So the rest of this stuff is a little bit it's all very yellow. The blues and the greys work great. I think this works really good. Blue as a sort of colour for justice. They've got it on there. They've also got grey. Uh, I mean, it's, it's fine. I just wish there was more story. What we have here is a lot of setup. It doesn't go anywhere. Um, so I'm kind of glad my brother paid £2.50. If I, I think if he'd have paid 17 quid, I'd have felt sorry for him. There we go. I can't recommend this book because it's not it's not a finished book. It's basically some setup. I mean, ask yourself this question, right? If you went into Waterstones, bought a Agatha Christie who took it home, folded it to the halfway page and ripped it in half, read the first half of that book, would you say that was the satisfying reading experience? So I'd say no. And this is exactly the same. And it's not even like there's the chance of like goes nowhere and for 80 best part of nearly 100 pages i'd hope to have some story not to say so there we go um sleeper can't recommend sorry um so next video we're going to be doing some um drawing on the comic jam piece a whole lot of why don't join me then in the meantime like comment share subscribe all of that good stuff if you have a question about anything to do with making comics Want to know something? I'll ask why do we do? Why do I do that? How do I? Do Whatever. Put it in a comment. I'll read it and you know, finance it or make a video about it. So in the meantime, like, comment, share, subscribe, all the good stuff said, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. All right, take care, everyone. All right, bye now.